I'm replacing an old DCC decoder and soldering in some independent ditch lights on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and I've had a couple locomotives on my workbench awaiting new DCC decoders for quite some time. In fact, in both cases, I have had the decoders for these locomotives, but they required more than just a simple board replacement. They required some soldering and some extra work, so I have put them off literally until the point that I had forgotten about them until I ran across them this week. Well, today I am replacing an old blown sound decoder with a non-sound decoder, but this locomotive has independently operated ditch lights, so I'm going to be soldering some wires onto this in-scale locomotive in order to keep that independent ditch light operation. Now, I know that doing that kind of soldering on fine electronics can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be, because today I'm going to show you how I install this decoder, but also how I solder on the wires and get these independent ditch lights running on the locomotive with the new decoder. So, let's head on over to the workbench and we'll get started. This video is brought to you by Midwest Model Railroad. Now with 15,000 square feet and one day shipping, they truly are your one-stop model railroad shop. MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. This is the locomotive that I'm working on today. It's an Atlas-840 CW. The body was already off the locomotive, so I started right in. Step one was to remove the old blown decoder. In these locomotives, you have to remove the retaining screws and separate the two halves of the frame slightly in order to take the decoder out. In the case of this locomotive, there is a separate small board in the front with two LEDs for the ditch lights. These work independently and feed the external lights via a light pipe. I want to save the independent function of these lights, so I'll need to remove their wires from the old decoder and solder them onto the new decoder on the correct pads. The new decoder is not insulated on the bottom, so it's essential to add a layer of Kapton tape to the top of the frame under the decoder to ensure that it doesn't short out on the frame and blow the decoder. Note that the motor leads are small tabs protruding above the motor. You must be sure to fit these into the small holes in the center of the decoder where they make contact. Once the decoder is installed, bend these tabs over to ensure good contact with the decoder. When the decoder was seated properly, I replaced the retention screws to hold the frame back together. At this point, the locomotive should run, but without the ditch lights. I took it to the layout and tested it, but realized that the decoder fit too loosely in the retention clips of the frame, and thus made it intermittent in electrical contact. To remedy this, I cut some tiny bits of styrene, approximately 20 thousandths of an inch thick, and wedged them between the top of the frame clip and the top of the decoder to ensure snug seating against the bottom of the clip. Another test run showed that this solved the problem. In preparation for installing the ditch light wires, I had to replace the larger tip on my soldering iron that I use for track and feeders with a small sharp pencil type tip which I use for fine electronics. Obviously do this before turning your soldering iron on. I have a variable temperature soldering iron and I lowered the heat to medium for this job. You want the heat high enough to complete the solder joint quickly but without damaging the board with excess heat. I have my soldering iron and everything that I use for soldering in a project like this on a product list on my Amazon store. I'll include a link to it in my Amazon pick of the week in the description below this video so you can check it out after the video. Before every soldering job, I use a tip cleaner and tinner to clean the tip for good heat transfer. I then clean it in a brass sponge. I make sure that the solder will melt on the tip quickly. I begin by heating and removing the needed wires from the old decoder. With Digitrax decoders like this one, the instructions for which wires attach where on the decoder are not included in the provided instruction sheet 
but they are available online in the Digitrax decoder manual. Just search for Digitrax decoder manual, look for your decoder on the website, and there you'll find the schematic. I screenshot the diagram and kept it on my phone in front of me to make sure that I was using the correct pads. Before I go any further, let me say that if you find this video helpful and would like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, be sure to subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I used an extra fine micro brush to apply just a tiny drop of flux to each soldering pad that I would be using. I then touched the soldering wire to the pad and applied some heat for just a couple seconds to tin the pad. For fine electronics like this, I use a very small soldering wire, three tenths of a millimeter. The wires were already tinned from being installed on the old board. I then touched the wires to the pads, applied heat until the solder liquefied, then removed the heat and held it in place very still for a couple seconds until it solidified. A bright silver joint is a sign of a good solder joint. I'm installing the positive LED leads to the pads for function 1 and 2 on the decoder and the negative leads to the common pad. These LEDs already had resistors installed in the positive wires so I didn't need to add them now. With the wires soldered in place, the little light board simply slides into its slot at the front of the frame. I took the locomotive out to the layout for testing. The ditch lights have to be remapped in function mapping, but they worked just fine, as the directional lighting did. I will ultimately program these for Rule 17 dimmable lighting and alternate flashing ditch lights, but that will be the topic of another video. I used some capped on tape to tidy up the wires before reinstalling the shell. As I installed the shell, I was careful to make sure that none of the wires or resistors were in the way of the lights. When I tested the locomotive again, I noticed that the left ditch light bled through around the edges of the glazing of the window in the nose door. To fix this light leak, I removed the shell again and applied a liberal amount of black paint to the bottom edge of the window glazing. As you can see, this fixed the problem. I took the locomotive to my programming track and set the Rule 17 dimmable lighting effect and remapped the ditch lights to function 3. The locomotive still needs to have the speed table set, but that will be part of the process of speed matching it to run in a consist at a later date. With the address set to the locomotive number, it was ready to run, and as you can see, it runs great. I'm really glad to have this Dash 8 back in service and looking forward to having it pulling trains on my layout very soon. Well, if you'd like to see more about decoder installation, programming, and DCC, as well as other model railroad content, check out the links on your screen. Don't forget about my Amazon Pick of the Week in the description, and join me on Tuesdays as I bring you even more great model railroad videos, and I'll see you on the next video. Tim, Lizzie?